Hello everybody out in YouTube world. Welcome to my little channel, The Creative Italian. I'm Maria, I'm The Creative Italian. And I'm finally able to get back on here after two months. I have not been able to do a YouTube video because my garden that I planted in April has taken up every bit of my time on my day off. And there's been no time for me to do anything on here. But now things are kind of slowing down a little bit so I can, I can do this and I really enjoy doing it. Um, also, those of you that are on here watching this video, if you subscribe to my channel already and gave me a like and did comments and whatever, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that because the algorithms pick that up and it gets the information out there uh, so that more people will find out about my channel that might be looking for what I have to offer. So thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate it. And also, before we get started, if you're new here or you haven't subscribed um, and you want to know when I upload a new video to my YouTube channel, go ahead and hit, go ahead and hit the notification bell. You'll know as soon as I upload a new video. And also, if you like the video, hit the like button. That would really help the algorithm. And also, if you have any comments to make, if you need help with the project, uh, have questions, you can leave it in the comments. You can email me or you can contact me through Etsy. Many people have done that all three ways, and I always respond in less than 24 hours. That's always my goal. So let's go ahead and get started. So like I said, I'm going to be sharing this very unique soldering technique. As a matter of fact, the same technique is in another video that I did. So you might want to take a peek at that also, either you know before this video or after this video, whenever. You know, it just helps to clarify some things, okay? So... This is the A pendant that I did. I was kind of playing around with this a little bit and I came up with this idea of doing these pendants because there's lots of initial pendants out there, but they're all smooth, just about, all, all the ones I Googled anyway, which is okay, nothing wrong with that, right? But I really wanted something different. I wanted to do something unique. So that's, so I decided to marry the texture with the initial and I came up with this idea. And it's so easy to do, you guys. It doesn't take any time at all to do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera around and so let's go ahead and get started. Yeah. You're gonna need some wire and I'm using 18 gauge wire. Um, soldering wire. Turn this around. You know what, I'm gonna move this. Uh, excuse me, guys, I gotta move my soldering tool here, my soldering iron, before I knock it off the table. Okay, you will need some flux. I've got some flux in this little cap right here. It's liquid flux. You can use whatever kind of flux you want. Uh, you will need a bench block, a metal hammer, a measure, uh, a ruler, This is to smooth out your wire off the roll. You don't have to have this, but I'm gonna tell you what, once you have one, you will always use this, you guys. It makes life so much easier. Wire cutters. Needle point, needle point pliers, jewelry wires. And of course your soldering iron. Oh, yes, I am leaving off something. Very important, we can't do this project without these. These are red rubber stamps that you, you know, use for like with ink to put on paper. Uh, they, I ordered these on Amazon, but as you can see, I took the rubber stamp off the wooden block because it's, it's really harder to get in there and really create that texture when it's on the block. Whereas when you have it in your hand like this, you can bend it and you can use your finger to really smush down on it, it, you know, it's just easier. And to me, it's more effective, you know, than trying to do it with this. So anyway, that's how I did it. I got those on Amazon, by the way. And you'll need some jump rings. These are eight millimeter or nine millimeter jump rings. You will also need just a regular nail file. Okay, so let's get started. 
The first thing you'll want to do is, of course, cut your wire. I'm using 18 gauge here, okay? Now, this particular A that I did, I cut three inches total of the wire. Three inches. And let's see. There you go. See now, I had already taken this, I forgot what this is called, tool frond. It's called tool frond and it smooths out your wire off the roll. So you could take it and smooth it out and straighten it out before you cut it. And I tell you what, it just makes life so much easier than trying to straighten it out after you've already taken it off the roll. Okay. So then I take my needle point pliers and I kind of eye it and go down the middle of the wire and just bend it up like so. Just like that. And then I kind of spread it apart to see, you know, how wide I want it, kind of like that. And then if it's uneven, if the, if the bottom of it is uneven, you could just take it, snip that off, you know, real easy. And then take your other piece and lay it across the top of the A and then decide, okay, do I want it that long? It's up to you, you know, I like it kind of hanging over the edges a little bit, like that, okay? So, I'm not going to do this on the video because I don't want to be banging things around, but you're going to take your hammer and you're going to soften this wire, or I mean not soften it, you're going to be hardening it. I said the opposite, you guys. You're going to harden it, okay, on both sides. Really good. Be, be careful with your fingers that you don't hit, hit, hit your fingers. <laughs> I did that one time. So. After you harden your wire, it's gonna flatten out and it's gonna look like this instead of round like that. See how this is round and this is flat, okay? So that's the difference. All right, now, I'm put my bench ball. I don't need that, so I'll put that up. Okay, so next step is to take your emery board and you want the hard, you know, want the, the regular emery board for your nails because it's rougher and harder. If you have an emery board that's soft that they use for acrylic nails, I've done that. It's a waste of time. Go ahead and just get your regular El Cheapo <laughs> emery board for real nails, for your non-artificial nails. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and take the file and rough up the metal like so, so that when you put your flux on and you put your solder on, it'll stick. So this is what helps make it stick, is this right here. Now, some wire, believe it or not, some wire, you don't have to do this, but I'm using Beadsmith wire elements, and I have found that I do have to do this before I solder, okay? So you wanna solder, you wanna do this on both sides of the metal, wire you know just be sure you do it really good get it on there good because if it's not thorough enough even if you put flux on it it's not going to stick or that's what's happened to me anyway okay if it just share my experience <laughs> well, i can do just like that and you could even do it on the sides of the wire a little bit here it doesn't hurt just like that and now you also want to do it with your jump ring. Where it's open right there, go ahead and take your emery board and go on the front and the back of it, like so. So it'll stick, the solder will stick. Okay, now, Here's what you do. We're gonna take our brush here. 
and start fluxing everything. Just like so. Now, one thing I found that when you're use, doing this technique, it's better to use less solder and not a lot of solder, okay? It turns out better when the solder is more on the thin side than it is the thick side to get the texture. And I found this out through lots of trial and error. One day I kept soldering and soldering and nothing was happening. And I thought, huh, maybe I just have too much solder. And sure enough, that's exactly what it was. I had too much solder. So you want to take your rubber stamp of choice. You want to have it in your hand. And you get ready to do this. And you just, what you do is, well, actually, you don't really quite need it in your hand quite yet. Um, just have it handy over here on the side. But what you want to do is go ahead and coat your letter that you plan to do. Go ahead and coat the wire first, just like so. We're gonna go ahead and just add little drops all around the frame. That's all you're gonna do right now. And so then what you do is it doesn't matter where, really where you start. Um, I like to start up at the top, but it does not make any difference. You can start anywhere. It's just that what you wanna do is you wanna flux it again before I forget. Yeah, you definitely want to flex it. You want to flex this piece again before you start using your rubber stamp. Because it makes it easier to melt really fast. And that's one of the keys here is that you want it to melt fast and get, you know, so you can get in there with your, with your rubber stamp. So, liquidy, I smash it. <laughs> is that a good word smash it see and you can see that texture right there and you do this do the same thing here but you got to be kind of fast so you want the rubber stamp right there at the iron as you're melting it so you can get in there and see I didn't get in there fast enough okay right there moving around on me. Okay, right here. And as you can see, the texture is already starting to take place here. Now see this little piece out here? That That's really no big deal. All you have to do is just take your iron and go back over it like so. Sometimes I'll add more solder as I'm going along if I think that my drops are, t are a little bit too thin. So it's really trial and area, er uh, trial and error, error, trial and error. That's what I'm, <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about. It's just, you just have to try it and work at it and just try different things and tweaking it. And then before you know it, one day it just happens. That's how it worked out for me. Here's what you want to do with this. You want to take it and kind of eye it where you want it, like so. Say I want it like that, okay? Like so, can y'all see that? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang on to it and flip it over and lay it down right about where I want it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and just drop a little bit of solder alongside of, it could be on the inside or it could be on the outside, it really doesn't matter. You don't wanna, you just wanna kinda drop a little piece of solder like on the sides right in here or out on the edge, whichever is easiest for you. And you wanna be real light with it, just enough to solder this to the front and so that it doesn't affect your texture on the front side. And even if it does affect the texture on the front side, I can show you how to fix that. I mean, a little flux right there and right there and right there.
that. All right, now, I'm just gonna very gently drop a bead of solder. Well, just hold it with your needle point pliers and just gently, yeah, that made all the difference in the world using the pliers to hold it in place. Okay. I think that's on there. Yep. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put the jump ring on. And we want, we've already filed the jump ring. And so dip it down in your flux. You want to open this up like so. Going away, slip it in and then close it up. And you want to be sure that you can't see any space. You want to be sure that you can't see any space Excuse me in your jump ring where you close it up okay so see this is going to slide around so we don't want it to do that so just go ahead now and take your flux here I always try to get the ring where it's open, or I mean where you open and close it to be where the solder is going to be. So all you want to do, and if it's easier for you just to use your pliers to hold it, you could just use your pliers to hold it, like so. Okay, like that. And then you're going to take a little bit of solder. And just going to very gently, let's see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It has to be where I use the emery board and where I put the flux, otherwise this is not going to stay. It's just not going to. It's going to do things I don't want it to do. It's just not stick. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and, and just take a little bit of solder. And right there where the close, where, where you open and close it, I'm just going to drop it on there. It doesn't have to be very much, just enough so it sticks. I mean, it's already sticking and I've barely touched it. Yeah. Okay. I wanna show you how I, I'm not gonna do the bee, but I'm gonna show you how I came up with the shape with the wire. Right here. So what I did, I'm going to use this, the 22 gauge wire because this is just for demonstration anyway. So I took my tool that, to smooth out the wire and kind of straighten it out first. And I cut about eh, a little bit over an inch. 
and then I just cut a couple of pieces a little bit shorter than it in a little bit shorter not quite as long as that piece right there and then depending on the size you want your letter to be that involves a circle will depend on what you use now you could use a highlighter which is pretty fat and big that's not what I'm going to be using I'm going to use a sharpie pen so all I did was I took this wire and just wrapped it around the Sharpie, okay? Just took two of those, just got my circle going here, wrap it around, just like that. Now, of course, obviously, those are kind of small, right? So all I did was just spread it out, spread the B out, like so. And I lined it up with my vertical piece that I had pre-cut. Now, as you can see, this is gonna, this excess wire here, all I'm gonna do is just pick it up where I wanna cut it off. And there we go. So it's a matter of really eyeing it. You wanna measure too, but eyeing it and kind of using your measuring tool, your, um, you know what I'm saying, the, uh, you, <laughs> this thing. <laughs> I can't get it out what I wanted to say. Your ruler. Yeah, your ruler. Okay, so that's how I came up with B. So you can use anything. You could even use this wooden circle right here to create your round parts for your P's and your O's and your cues or whatever whatever else you're using. And on the on this one, I actually used two rings. I used a smaller ring and just soldered it on the back side of the top of the B. That was the easy way to do it for this particular piece. You could actually do it with the A as well, you know, if you wanted to. Okay. Um, and then you add another jump ring to that. Of course, you just put the jump ring on. You don't have to solder it. But So then it hangs like so. It, it, it hangs like a dangle as opposed to, you know, doing it this way. It, and you know, it really doesn't, it depends on what's easier for you. Actually, either way works. But the main thing is we got to have this jump ring going this way because the the, your cord and your chain is going to be running through this way, right? So that's why, you know, I did it that way. So you can do it either way, whatever works for you. Um, okay, so that's it for right now. I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope this is something that you'll enjoy doing and making a special gift maybe for somebody, right? Anyway, if you like my video, if you give it the thumbs up, if you want to no be notified when I upload a new video to my channel, hit the notification bell. And if you have any questions, comments, you need help on the project, leave, leave it in the comments, email me, or you can even reach to me, reach out to me on Etsy. And I respond within less than 24 hours. And I'm glad that you're here. And I'm glad I was able to get back on here and do another video for you guys. Thank you so much. And ciao until the next time. Bye-bye.